Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. Woo, number five I've done in one day. Ugh, I'm so happy I'm gonna be finished with this here in a minute. Well, it's gonna be longer because it's three wines. All right, so um, yet another wine or a group of wines that have been donated kindly to me by somebody uh, from a representative of a winery or a distributor or whatever. Um, so um, we have the Cassiero de Diablo, oh, I'm sorry, Del Diablo uh, winery here. Now, I have done other wines from this winery. I may have done a Malbec or Chardonnay in the past. I guarantee you these are different vintages, so therefore it qualifies as a wine I will review. Um, and again, it's a wine that I haven't tasted because it all, you know, this is sealed. You can't see any wine taken out, so yay. All right, um, so let's kind of go over who they are real quick, or as quick as I can. Um, so in the closing years of the 19th century, Don Melkor de Concha y Toro, an eminent Chilean statesman, entrepreneur, and vineyard owner, discovered that his most treasured wines had been pilfered from the Casillado, or cellar, beneath his ancestral home to discourage further theft. I love this story, by the way. Um, to, to discourage further theft, the enterprising Don spread a rumor that his deepest, darkest cellars were haunted by El Diablo, the devil. Um, thus was born the legend of Casiero del Diablo, today's, today Chile's best-selling wines worldwide with the original Concha y Toro family estate, uh, complete with its devil's cellar, now Chile's number one tourist attraction, bar none. Okay, that might be a little hyperbole on their part, but I'm sure the story is great and people are going to want to, I, I'd want to go see it. Um, then they, they have their little tagline is stored in hell made in heaven, which I'm using as the title of this episode. Um, the wines may have been stored in hell, but they are made in viticultural heaven. Uh, with steady sunshine, cooling winds and phylloxera free vineyards. Chile is a winemaker's paradise. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, uh, this particular brand, they debuted in 1956. A decade later, Concha y Toro became one of the first Chilean wine producers to export to, uh, wines to the U.S. 60 years on, <clears throat> uh, their cab is the most widely distributed, best-selling Cabernet Sauvignon worldwide. I'm pretty sure I had that. Um, Mondavi, Robert Mondavi, helped open the door here in the U.S., labeling his wines not by geographic region, but by great variety. The goal is to attract new wine drinkers. Um, so uh, since they do the same thing, they were ideal for the market. Um, I'm just trying to get through this. New markets led to new ideas, tasting grapes before picking, reduced yields, and keeping a clean house as in cellars and barrels to avoid Brettanomyces uh, or Brett and other spoil another flavor spoilers um, as exports rose to the funding for new technologies and vineyards yada 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 making wines in volume and creating wines with personality might seem contradictory but winemaker Marcelo Papa uh, who helped shep who has shepherded Cassiero del Diablo since 1998 has accomplished this, delivering exceptional wines that are widely available in the marketplace. And then la, 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 la. All right, so all of these wines, all three of them are suggested retail of $11. Okay, so I don't have to go through that again. All right, so let's get into the wine. This is the 2015. Uh, remember, they are six months ahead of us in, uh, or they, they pick six months sooner than we do. Um, Casiero de, del Diablo Reserva Chardonnay. A. 
Charm away, day day. All right, um, it's 100% Chardonnay. It's just a Chile um, appellation. We're gonna do a little rinse of that. I did try to rinse it a little bit with water. I have a good friend of mine that would kill me that I rinsed and seasoned the glass with water. So I'm gonna do that with the wine now. All right. Uh, let's see if there's anything on here. Do, 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 do. No, they just have the same. They just have the same. Uh, um, who's he? What's it? Story about the uh, the seller and the devil. Melon, cantaloupe again, uh, tropical fruits. So. What, what a Chardonnay should have. Especially that melon thing. I always pick up melon and Chardonnay, it seems like. It, depending on the style. I also, think, I also believe I get some apple to it. Uh, what do they say? Light lemon uh, is light lemon yellow with expressive and attractive aromas of pineapple, citrus, and vanilla. That might be what I'm getting, the vanilla. I mean, I know I said apple and apple and vanilla are not the same thing, but. Palette confirms the nose. It's pretty much the same thing. But there is um I hate I hate this, but a lot of times these wines remind me of being in a Chinese restaurant. Because when I first started getting into wine, I was going to PF Chang's a lot. Yes, I know PF Chang's is Americanized Chinese food, but it's actually good. Um, and I worked in a Chinese food restaurant. It was called Oriental Steakhouse. So they had some non-Chinese uh, other Oriental or Asian dishes. Um, so, and I've had real, like authentic, you know, the people came off the boat uh, and to the United States, Chinese food. So I know the difference and I know what good American Chinese food should taste like. Um, and honestly, P.F. Chang's does a good job. So if you hate on them, well, too bad. But the point of the story is, I, I remember having lots of white wines, and that's really where I first got introduced to Viognier as a wine to pair with uh, food because the bartender at that, at that P.F. Chains in Chicago knew enough about wine to kind of help me out with, with wine pairings. So I always enjoyed going there, and I had a lot of white wine there because I'd have a lot of like General So or Orange Peel Chicken type of dishes, so really red wine, we're not going to do that. See, I like white wine. I do, I do get the pineapple, and that's where I, that's where I get that Chinese food thing. Not all Chinese food has pineapple, but some dishes have a bit of pineapple to it, or a tropical type of uh, fruit to it. Um, the sweet and sour sauce has has that kind of component to it, um, especially when you put pineapple in the sweet and sour sauce. So it's, I get a lot of that, and that's. It should be almost 100% a marker of Chardonnay for me, but sometimes Viognier gives me the same feeling because I get that, that old memory of drinking that style of wine, that particular style of Viognier, and eating Chinese food. So that's why sometimes we'll get that confusion. Like, is it a really creamy Viognier with a good body, or is it Chardonnay? But anyway, it's an $11 bottle of wine. It's good. I mean, for what it is. Um, is it a Chardonnay that I particularly love? Not really, um, in, in longtime viewers of the show, know that Chardonnay and I, and Pinot Noir and I, and even kind of Riesling and I, aren't always like best of friends, though we're never the worst of enemies. Um, I just, there's, there's definitely lots of Chardonnay that I just don't 
care for. It's just not that it's poorly made or bad. It's just a preference and we all have our preferences. Is it a good wine? Yes. Is it well made? Yes. If you like the style of wine, are you gonna like this? Yes, it's 11 bucks, it's a great price for it. There's no reason not to buy this unless the Chardonnay that you want is not this style. Then find another Chardonnay that you like uh, for the same price point, which they're out there. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna waste any more time on that. It's not a bad Chardonnay if this is your style, absolutely. I recommend that you get it. All right, bam. Like move on to wine number two. Bam. Feel like, you know, Walter Cronkite. Kids, you know who, don't know who he is? Look him up. One of the last great television news people. Bam. All right. So this wine, I usually tell you what it is before I start pouring it, but I got excited. Mainly because it's a Carmenere. And not that Carmenere is necessarily a favorite grape of mine, but I always enjoy having a single varietal Carmenere because I don't get a lot of them. I don't get to try them very often by themselves. All right, so this is the 2004, sorry, 2015 Cassiero del Diablo Reserva Carmenere, also suggested retail price of what? You got it. All right, 100% uh, Carmenere and not Carmenere. There is no tilde over the N. Okay. Um, and that's at Central Valley uh, in Chile. And I think it's just a Chile for the Chardonnay. Yeah, just Chile. So Central Valley, Central Valley for, uh, in Chile for the Carmenere. And we will check it out. Good amount of stuff going on in this nose. And it was like one aroma, then followed by another, then followed by another, instead of necessarily um, uh, just a cacophony or a symphony of, of aromas at the same time. But, and, and I know part of it's because I did happen to look at the tasting notes because I was looking on there to see if there's anything there. But I saw the word coffee and I was kind of like, okay, well, we'll see if we get coffee out of it. I was skeptical. First nose, I was kind of like, ah, no coffee. Oh, there's the coffee. Okay. So definitely hints of coffee. Roasted coffee. Roasted coffee beans. Um, like espresso. And I don't really like coffee, but I love the smell of it. And then like a creaminess, like that espresso turns into a cappuccino, okay, or a mocha. And then there's there's a woodsiness to it, um, you know, a cedar box, um, not not really potpourri, but and like a little bit of smokiness to it. That's like maybe the roasted part. A little bit of um, earth, but fruit, I'm struggling to come up with a fruit aroma descriptor. But there's, there's all kinds of just earthiness, minerality, non-fruit, non-floral aromas. But it feels like there's a fruit component to it that I don't get. Because in my mind, after I said all that, I was like, well, then would I take this old, old world or new world? Well, I know it's new world, but Carmenere, new world, Carmenere, I don't even know if there's, 
as far as at the level of exams that I'm taking, if there even is a classic example for me to worry about. It's not a grape that's necessarily listed as, like, this is not a testable wine, even if it's a classic example of Chilean Carmenere. It's not on the list. But there's some other components to the to those I really like, but we're going to move on to the palate. Mmm. Okay, so I was looking to see if there's any type of green qualities to the aroma or the nose. I mean, the aroma or um, the palate. There isn't, and it's not over, it was like a hint. It was just a hint of that pepper, that bell pepper, which I love to get in wine, um, which I know is a sign of possibly underripe grapes. But I don't, I'm not afraid of that. But after that, it was a bunch of other stuff, mostly the same thing from the nose. But there's spices, um, not really a whole preponderance of fruit, but there's a little bit of, I would call it like red or darker red fruit. They, they um, mentioned plum specifically. I don't think I necessarily get plum. Um, they say toasty American oak with soft and well-structured, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say I get chocolate out of it, but there's a slight bitterness to it. I like the wine, but I would like it with food better, okay? This is a wine that's a little bit more my style versus last week's wine that wasn't my style, but I really felt that you give it with food, it's gonna taste really good, or it's gonna at least improve the, the flavor, uh, and I would probably enjoy it. Um, I do like this wine. Is it a good wine? Yeah, it's a good wine. Is it well-made? Yes, um, no faults, nothing wrong with the wine. Um, it's, got good, it's, it's got good overall, Aroma and flavor and mouthfeel, uh, it's $11, so you've got a good price point, you know, but don't expect some fruit bomb out of this. At least I don't get a fruit bomb. There's, there's fruit to it, but I, I get more of the bramble and I want to say dust, but the, the more earthiness out of it. Yeah. All right, let's move on to wine number three. That way we're not taking 30 minutes to do three wines. So, oh yeah, before I even get to this, let's so spray all that over there. Let's get the next fact sheet. Now this is, you know, I, said that, I said that was a 15 Carmenere. I'm gonna make sure that I actually put the note down correctly. This says 14, so it must be that either I misread something or the information I had was wrong. So let me update that. Let me make sure that the uh, Chardonnay, Chardonnay is 15. So we were good on that. All right. Next up is the 2014 Casiero del Diablo Reserva Malbec. Uh, also from the Central Valley. And there's nothing else about it other than it's 100% Malbec. So it's not just Argentina that makes Malbec, it's Chile. Chile makes it. I did have an Argentinian or an Argentine Malbec recently and I completely botched that one. It was at night, so there's, you know, particular color, you know, rim color that you look for or that if you see it is usually an indicator of Argentinian Malbec, but I didn't, I couldn't see it because it was dark. It's always the danger of doing blind tastings in a bar at night. All right. Mm. 
only because I know it's Malbec do I see that hot pink um, rim. But that normally tells you Argentina. I'm not really sure about Chile if, it, if it's pre supposed to be present in that. But I'm looking for it, so therefore I see it. But I mean, there's definitely that, that kind of coloration to it. So, and, and I don't know if it says coffee on this. I, I looked, but I like was looking for something besides just tasting notes. I didn't say anything just in case. So I didn't really read any of the of the aroma or whatever. But you know how I said there was like a coffee to this? I mean, sorry, to this. Um, but I said, you know, I know I read it. I get absolutely, like I walked into a coffee shop, okay, coffee house. I get that mixture of, of, coffee beans that you can smell. And maybe some tobacco. But not just the coffee, but you know, a chocolate or mocha aroma. Those are the overriding aromas is the coffee mocha um, and then uh, uh, um, chocolate and then also wood. As in actual wood, not wood barrels. Tobacco, cigarette, more like cigarette tobacco, you know. I think I, maybe, I know maybes, but like a hint of mint. But that's it. No fruit that I would, could pin on, you know, pin down. It says black fruit. So this is what it says. Inky purple wine with aromas of luscious dark fruit mixed with hints of spice. The palate is mouth filling, which it is, with black fruit flavors of dark plum layered with spicy cocoa and toasty and a toasty yet lush balanced finish. Do I get all that? No. Um, plum. Okay, I'll give you that one. Um, is definitely a red or a dark fruit. Um, I'll go with that. Maybe blackberry. I would probably say blackberry more than plum. But hey, you know, your plum is my blackberry. My blackberry is your plum. Um, <clears throat> and then um, spicy cocoa. I can get the spices. I got the cocoa on the aroma, but I don't really get it on the, on the palate necessarily. But there is that toasty, roasted, uh, like um, coffee type of flavor. Um, lush balance. You know, is it lush? Oh, eh, lush might be stretching a little bit, but it's definitely it definitely mouth, fills the mouth. Um, it, it it's it's got a good mouth feel to it. Um, it's got good flavor. Uh, we're gonna taste a little bit more. Um, is it a well made wine? Absolutely. Um, Malbecs are are again another one of those wines, one of those grapes that I kind of don't get why Americans and maybe the rest of the world just goes gaga over, okay? Um, maybe it's just because I've had so many different kinds of Malbecs that I haven't had that one that I'm just like, oh, this is all, well, no, I've had, I'm sorry. That's not, that's not true. I've had some Malbecs that I, I thought were fantastic, okay? And they might've been around this price point. But as a whole, most Malbecs are kind of like, yeah, it's all right. 
but yeah, I have a few at work that I have one that's probably right about this price point. But it's a Malbec blend. So it's not 100% Malbec. It's, it's all the five varietals of Bordeaux, but Malbec's the lead varietal. And that one is pretty fantastic. And then I have another one that's 100% Malbec. Definitely more expensive than these. It's closer to like probably, I'm going to guess, 40-ish retail. And that's just a guess. Um, but it's, it's, yeah. And then I also have one that's like really expensive, but good Lord, it's awesome. So second pour. I mean, I like the wine. I do not dislike this wine at all. I like it. Um, I, I really like the nose on it. And I think with Malbec, I really kind of have to get, uh, get in my head. There's this bramble earthiness, minerality, whatever you want to call it. That's not fruit driven. Um, but it doesn't, it misses all the other components to make it something else. So when I have to go through the list of, well, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, not this, because it doesn't have these, these uh, markers, these flavor components, then it has to be Malbec. And I think that's where I get my confusion as to calling it completely something else almost every time. It's a good wine for 11 bucks, especially. Um, I think you know, you're not going to go wrong with it if you like Malbecs, and this seems to be the prevalent style um, of Malbec. You're going to like it, you like the price point, you should get it. All right, um, that's going to wrap it up uh, for this episode. Um, thank you as always for stopping by. Uh, leave comments below uh, YouTube or at my website, I will have a link to. Uh, the winery's website on my website. Um, leave five star ratings. Uh, you can uh, on iTunes, please. Uh, check me out on Roku uh, under the iFood.tv app or the iWine, actually, the iWine TV or iWine.tv app. Um, of course, YouTube, you can watch on Roku or, or Xbox or I guess PlayStation or whatever, or your computer, or Apple TV, you know, all, all these, you know, set top boxes you know, have YouTube, you can watch my stuff. Uh, TiVo, I'm assuming TiVo still works. Like my stats can't, can we, they don't specify TiVo anymore. Um, and all that. Friend me up above, click the links above the friend me up. Uh, hopefully soon I will be seeing those friend requests. So I will friend you up. If you haven't seen five, ep you know, five episodes ago where I explained why I'm not friending anyone up immediately or accepting their friend request, go back and watch it. Uh, or you can send me some ducats to buy some more wine. Remember, these were all donated to me, so that's awesome. If you are somebody who wants to donate wine to me, let me know. Understand it could take three months before I actually review your wine, depending on my schedule, the production schedule that I may have made promises to other people. I may have other episodes, quote, in the can. Um, or in my personal work schedule may just be, I don't have time. All right. Remember, this is not my job. If it was, I'd be like homeless. All right. But um, I do this as a labor of love for the most part, and I enjoy doing it. All right. So um, that's going to do it. Again, all those things. And we'll see everyone again next time.